Hi, my name is Ron Lovell, and today we're going to do two things. We're going to show you how to safely use a planetary or a bowl mixer. This particular model is a 20 quart, and we're also going to learn how to make some pizza dough. We have uh, kitchen aids uh, that we use in the classroom sometimes, but uh, you may want to make a big batch, and that's where this big one comes in. You may remember our old mixer was a Hobart mixer, and it didn't have a safety cage. It was a lot more dangerous. Uh, and this one, uh, just a much better unit and it's much safer. This mixer doesn't know the difference between your hand and flour or dough, so it can take your hand right off. You really want to be careful with it. The first thing you want to do when using one of these mixers is make sure it's unplugged uh, whenever you're going to be adding the bowl or adding the attachments. Today we're going to be making pizza dough, so the first thing I do is I wash my hands, of course. I sanitize all of the equipment, and I've already done that. I have my disinfectant sanitizer right here. I have all of my ingredients right here. This is Nissan Floss, so this means everything in its place so that when we make a video, I don't have to run off and get stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing, like I said, it's unplugged. I'm gonna take my bowl, and there's a little knob back here. That's going to go into this hole right here. And then there's two safety catches. One over here, one over here. And to make pizza dough, we want to have 105 degree temperature water, which I'm right at 105. And so I'm going to pour this into the bowl. And then I'm going to sprinkle some Fleshman's yeast or whatever, Red Star, whatever kind of yeast you like to use. I'm going to sprinkle this right on top of the water. And then I'm going to add some sugar. The sugar helps the yeast to wake up or to activate quicker. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my dough hook and it's already been sanitized. It just slides right up and then turn it. We're going to raise the bowl. Close the safety cage and then we can plug it in. There's a dial up top, and there's also a start, a start button and a stop button, and a speed. You always want to start off your mixer at speed number one. So it's at one. I'm going to give it a quick spin just to mix up these ingredients. Now I'm going to wait 10 minutes while the yeast fully activates and it's going to start bubbling. I'll show you that in just a minute. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes and I want to show you what the water and the yeast looks like at this point. You can see the yeast is starting to bubble up. That means it's fully activated and uh, doing what it's supposed to do. I mentioned earlier uh, KitchenAid. This is a small unit that you may have at home, and there no kitchen should be without uh, a little kitchen aid like this. It's got six speeds. Uh, it works in much the same way. It's got the attachment um, rod right there, and then it's got the lever that you can raise and lower the bowl. This also has an attachment um, bay in the front where you can put uh, other different types of attachments there. This one has one also, um, but uh, that's for another lesson. Anyway, our yeast is uh, looking real good, so the next thing I want to do is add some olive oil to this. So following the same steps, I'm going to raise and lock my bowl. I'm going to close the safety cage. And at this point, um, I could set the timer up here, but I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, now that it's in a safe 
position, I can go ahead and plug it in. And I'll hit start. And in the safety instructions, it says you can't add ingredients to a bowl, uh, but this does have a, a little uh, chute right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the olive oil in there. The old style Hobart mixture mixer, I wouldn't uh, add ingredients while it's mixing. And give this a quick mix. And then I'm going to unplug it again because I'm going to add my flour and my salt next. So at this point I can drop this bowl, open up the cage, and I'll add flour. Try not to spill it so I don't have to make a clean up my mess later on. Then the salt. Bowl goes up, safety cage, and at this point I can go ahead and set the timer because I'm going to want this to mix for about five minutes. So I set that for five minutes. I'm going to plug it in, make sure I'm turned to one, and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. This is going to mix for five minutes and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, we're back at it. And the timer is just about finished. There we go, we're all done. And you can see we have a beautiful dough ball. Remember, unplug the machine. And we can drop the bowl, open up the safety cage, and we have an excellent little dough ball right there. I'm gonna remove my dough hook and this dough ball is ready to go. I do like to put a little bit of flour on the dough ball and then also on the parchment paper and that just keeps it from sticking. A little difficult to do one-handed but now we're going to cover this with uh, plastic wrap. We're going to let it rise for a little bit and then refrigerate and it's going to be good to go. At that point, after it uh, finishes um, rising, you can just grab hunks of this dough and uh, about 10 ounces will do an individual pizza. Uh, but it's a lot better than uh, paying 20 bucks for one or uh, buying something from delivery. You can do this at home. Anyway, enjoy.